We're back at Module 4 CVP Analysis. M4-2, calculate the contribution margin ratio and the variable cost ratio. As always, start by reading the question. Orange Inc. manufactures a product which they sell to wholesalers and retailers. They have the following contribution margin income statement for 2019. If you joined me in the last video, you'll recognize this contribution margin income statement. I'm going to use Orange Inc. and this information for the remainder of the videos covering CVP analysis. Let's look at the required. Calculate the contribution margin ratio and the variable cost ratio. What information do these ratios provide to you, the managerial accountant? Let's start by calculating them. We're going to do it directly on the contribution margin income statement. When we're calculating ratios, we always use sales revenue as the denominator. Therefore, if I want the percentage of sales revenue in comparison to sales revenue, I would take 150,000 divided by 150,000 and multiply it times 100% to get the percentage, which is 100%. I need to calculate the contribution margin ratio and the variable cost ratio. I'm going to start with the variable cost ratio. Again, I'm going to use sales revenue as the denominator total variable costs divided by sales revenue multiplied times 100% is equal to 55%. That's the variable cost ratio. I'm going to use that in the future as a short form. Now let's try the contribution margin ratio. 67,500 divided by the sales revenue multiplied times 100% is equal to 45%. Contribution margin ratio. I'm going to use that in the future as a short form. Notice the relationship between the three percentages. 100 minus 55% is equal to 45%. That means that if I gave you even one of these, the variable cost ratio or the contribution margin ratio, you should be able to calculate the other ones. The next part of the question says, what information do these ratios provide to you, the managerial accountant? The contribution margin ratio tells you the amount of every sales dollar that is available to cover fixed costs and provide a return to the shareholders in the form of operating income. For instance, for every $1 of sales, Orange Inc. uses 55 cents to cover their variable costs. That means there is only 45 cents available to cover all the fixed costs. Remember, these costs don't go away even if production volume is equal to zero. This 45 cents also has to cover the operating income necessary to make the external stakeholders, such as investors, happy. You can see why the contribution margin ratio is so important. Let's move on to the next part of the question. What if, on a test or exam, the following question was asked? Would you be able to answer it using your understanding of both ratios? Let's read it. Another division of Orange Inc. produces another product, XB24, which has a contribution margin of 42,800 and a variable cost ratio of 36%. Calculate the sales revenue in dollars for this product. The formula is always the same. Sales revenue makes up 100% of the calculation for the ratios. Variable costs, both production and non-production, equal the variable cost ratio. In this case, 36%. Using this, we can calculate the contribution margin ratio. Wonderful, we've got the contribution margin ratio. But what was the required? Calculate the sales revenue in dollars for this product. Can we do that? Well, what information do we have? We have the contribution margin in dollars, 42,800. Can we work backwards in order to get sales revenue in dollars? And we can. Let's look at how we can do this. The formula to calculate contribution margin is sales revenue in dollars multiplied times the contribution margin ratio is equal to the contribution margin in dollars. Well, sales revenue, we don't know. But we do have the contribution margin ratio. And we do have the contribution margin in dollars. If we divide both sides by 64%, we can eliminate the 64% on the left-hand side. That means sales revenue is equal to 42,800 divided by 64%. Sales revenue is therefore equal to 66,875. Let's double check that. If we multiply this times the contribution margin ratio, we should get 42,800. And we do. 
no matter what you are given. If you have any piece of information such as the variable cost ratio or the contribution margin ratio, you can calculate for unknown number. Let's move on to the next part of the question. What information does the contribution margin ratio provide that the contribution margin in dollars does not? Let's look at the two products produced by Orange Inc. to see why the ratio is more valuable than the dollar amount. We'll do this by comparing the two products. For product one, which was the contribution margin income statement at the beginning of the question, we have sales revenue of 150,000, variable cost of 82,500, and contribution margin of 67,500. For XB24, we have the contribution margin of 42,800 and the sales revenue that we just calculated, 66,875, but we actually have to calculate for the unknown number variable costs. 66,875 minus 42,800 tells us that the variable cost is 24,075. Excellent. Now, which product would you choose to continue to produce? Product 1? or XB24. It seems pretty clear, right? Product 1 produces 67,500 compared to 42,800. Therefore, we're getting more money in our pocket through Product 1 than we are through XB24. If we have to decide between the two products, it seems very clear that we're going to choose to continue to produce Product 1. Now, let's add information about the contribution margin ratio to both of these products. Now, which product did you decide that we should continue to produce? Are you sure it should be product one? Because when you look at product XB24, for every dollar of sales, we consume 36 cents in order to cover our variable costs. That means that we end up having 64 cents in our pocket. For every dollar of sales, we get 64 cents in our pocket to cover fixed costs and operating income to make our external shareholders, such as investors, happy. For product one, for every one dollar of sales, 55% or 55 cents are used to cover variable costs, and only 45 cents end up going into our pocket to cover fixed costs and our operating income. We might choose to produce XB24 because it provides a bigger bang for every dollar we sell. A comparison of absolute dollars can lead you astray, so it's best to calculate both the absolute dollar value and the contribution margin ratio. That way you get a clearer picture to make an informed decision moving forward. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I'll see you in the next one.